Thanks for joining this how-to screencast, brought to you by Salesforce Support. In this video, we're going to provide an overview of Slack for Service features. We'll start by looking at the traditional tiered model of customer support. This model is often frustrating, and many customers can relate. You call into a support center and explain your situation to an agent after waiting 10, 20, 30 minutes on hold. The agent doesn't know how to fix your problem and puts you on hold again while you're transferred to someone up the ladder, only to have to start at ground zero with the new agent. This model results in delays, slower case resolution, and an upset customer. Simply put, Slack for Service is the future and brings many improvements from the traditional tiered model. Slack for Service brings agents, experts, and case records all together to help quickly resolve high priority or complex cases. Here are just a few of the great features for Slack for Service. Teams can work in channels and threads dedicated to a particular topic, account, or customer. Agents can search for files, case records, and channels to quickly help resolve a case. Updates made from the Slack app on a particular case record will sync back to the case record in Salesforce. One of the most critical features of Slack for Service is the introduction of case swarming. This is a way for agents to bring in subject matter experts to swarm a high priority or complex case. As I just mentioned, one key feature of Slack for Service is swarming. With the swarming model, the customer has a single main contact end-to-end -end and sees a faster case resolution. If a roadblock or other problem arises, the case owner can swarm with other team members who bring in the desired skills to help solve the case. Swarming allows multiple support agents to help on high severity issues, reducing repeat questions to customers and reducing time to resolve. A swarm is a Slack channel where a case owner collaborates with experts. At a high level, here's how a swarm works. The case owner initiates a swarm from either Salesforce or Slack. When determining resources to add to the swarm, the case owner can add known resources or the system can automatically add experts based on their skills and capacity. Where the collaboration should take place is important. The case owner may decide to create a new dedicated channel for the specific case, or they may add the swarm to an existing channel, say to a channel comprised of experts with given skill sets. The case owner can add the final outcome and resolution to the case. This way, the system tracks swarm participants who contributed to the case. Creating a swarm over and over again is inefficient. Therefore, it's critical to have a strong knowledge process in place to ensure resolutions make it into knowledge articles. This way, agents who encounter the same issue in the future can simply consult the applicable knowledge article to resolve the issue without bringing in additional resources. Finally, Gaining insights into how teams are contributing to the swarm process works to reinforce the team-based culture of assisting in swarms. Now, we're going to cover how to set up swarming at a high level. First, you'll need to connect your Slack app and your Salesforce instance. Then, follow these steps in order. You can click on the hyperlinks in each step to get more details on each of the steps. Turn on swarming from setup. In the quick find box, type in swarming, and then select swarming. Set up swarming user permissions. Set up the Lightning Service Console with swarming objects. Set up pre-configured swarming flows. Pre-configured swarming flow templates can help direct users to do actions such as beginning a swarm, ending a swarm, reopening a swarm, closing a swarm. Prepare Omnichannel for swarming. Omnichannel can help make swarming even more effective with Expert Finder helping you add SMEs to a swarm. Omnichannel can also ensure agents who have availability and the right skills are added to swarms. This can help to close cases even faster Create a swarm report, optional. Optionally, you can create a swarm report to see case details, swarm members, swarm details. You can use these data points to find out exactly what happened on a particular case record. Now you might be wondering how swarming looks in action. Let's take a look at a sample scenario for B2B customer Lauren. Lauren works for Omega retailers who have stocked Cirrus products for five years. She recently placed a bulk order online, but it hasn't arrived. She submits an email to customer support to locate her inventory in time for the weekend sales. Logged into the service console, service agent Charlie is assigned Lauren's case. He accepts Lauren's case and starts working. He is given the ability to start a swarm using a case action flow. This flow identifies the right swarm. The flow also allows Charlie to create a new channel in Slack. He can also add in some public defaults and include a description. Charlie is also able to add additional team members or find subject matter experts using the skills object. Once the swarm is complete, we'll be able to see it tracked in our new Slack channel. Now in Slack, we can see a new swarm channel has been created by Charlie. This gives us the ability to add new swarm members to the channel. 
we can loop in Lauren, our customer, as well as other technical members that might be able to help support and find Lauren's order. Clicking into the case number will bring us back, directly into our service console, where this Swarm Slack connection was started. Coming back to Slack, we can see case information. We can collaborate with our colleagues so that we can resolve this case. Once we've found the order and resolved the issue, we can also complete our Swarm right in this channel. And that will also close out this Slack channel. We can also search for other cases. We'll use the service search command here and we'll just broadly search for any orders to see what we have. Once we've found the case we're looking for, we can click in by selecting View. That would bring us back to the service console where we can work the case further. Just like with orders, we can also search for existing swarms. And again, we can click in and view the swarm or make edits if necessary. We're also able to start a new swarm directly in Slack. We have the option of creating a brand new dedicated channel, or if we think there's an existing channel that might be relevant, we can move this new swarm there. We'll use an existing channel for this example. We'll need to find our order number, which we can do in the service console. Once we plug that in, we can add some additional detail or a description here and click Create. There we have it. Now this case is included in this existing Slack channel, and we can follow the same steps we saw earlier and add in colleagues who can help us troubleshoot. Once we have the information that we need, I can share it directly with our customer Lauren and close out this case. I can close out this swarm directly from the case record or in Slack. If at any point I need to reopen a swarm, I can do that from here as well. We can also review the swarm record for any details that might be necessary, such as the owner, the added description, the related case record, the status of the swarm, and a link that will take me back to the Slack channel. And of course, we can also see the case details panel for any additional information that might be helpful. Before starting with swarming, it's good to have a full picture of its capabilities. Here are just a few key limitations and things to consider for swarming as a part of the Slack app. To let users join a swarm in Slack, the swarm member must be a Salesforce user. The swarm member must have connected their Salesforce account to the service cloud for Slack app. The swarm member must belong to the same workspace as the swarm requester. Other limitations. When starting a swarm in an existing channel, you can select from the first 1,000 public or private channels of which that user is a member. Swarming isn't supported in Salesforce Essentials Edition. You can mention user groups in a swarm channel, but you can't add user groups as swarm members. Okay, got it? We've covered a lot of information here, but remember, we always have additional resources ready for you to dig into. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.